something happens when you lift the Savior up. Amen. 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 All to see. Amen. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 First, give me honor to God and to the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that is here. We give honor to the First Lady Harris. Amen. To Deaconess Warren, to our deaconess in training, to our deacon in training, to all the members and guests of New Life. Amen. So Amen. happy to see you this morning on this November 5th, 2017. Amen. God is good and God Amen. continues Amen. to be good. Amen. 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 The Lord has given a word for us today. Amen. That will be in Revelation chapter 7. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 7. Timely and appropriate. Amen. Revelation chapter 7. We'll be looking at verses 9 through 17. Amen. As you find it, please stand. It's also displayed on the wall. If you don't have access to the word of God, you don't have your own copy. It's on the wall as well. Revelation 7, verses 9 through 17. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Yes. Amen. Amen. That is Amen. the word Amen. of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Father, we surrender ourselves to you right now that we might hear directly from you. Use me as your instrument, O oh God, to speak truth, to allow your word to come forth boldly and with power, with clarity and with understanding, that it will be a seed that falls into good ground, that produces the fruit that you want it to produce. It's in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Please pray with me on the topic this afternoon, God made a way. Yes. Amen. Amen. God made a way. Yes. Yesterday, uh, November 4th, marked the ninth year of uh, President Barack Obama's historic election to the presidency on November 4th, 2008. <coughs> Amen. That was a wonderful thing just to think about. Yes. Maybe you did as I did and look back on some of the videos or some of the pictures from that great day and seeing his family up on stage. Here we are nine years later, and I have to point out in Wednesdays, that's November 1st, New York Daily News, a disturbing headline read, majority of Americans are stressed about the country's future. The author quickly revealed that more than two-thirds of Americans are stressed out 
about the future of this country. More stress than work, more stress than money, more stress than crime, according to this new poll by the American Psychological Association. And nearly 60% believe we're currently living in the lowest point in U.S. history. And that includes those who lived through World War II and the Vietnam War. Between August 2nd and 31st of this year, the APA, that's the American Psychological Association, had polled 3,440 adults, of which 1,376 were men, 2,047 were women. The majorities included, these, that is the majorities of people that are stressed out about the future of the country, included Democrats, Republicans, and independents. Causes of stress included concerns about health care costs, the economy, trust in the government, crime, and hate crimes. Many people point to the current president and his low ratings and constant news as a source of stress. In spite of the stress that most Americans feel, I've come with some good news today. Amen. That is that God made a way. Yes. God made a way out of the stress. Yes. He told us to pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says something like, Don't be worried about anything, yes. but by everything through thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Yes. And God will give you peace that surpasses all understanding if you would just let go and let God. Like I said, I'm paraphrasing. God made a way out of the stress if we would just pray. God made a way to relieve the stress if we would just trust in him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. God made a way to overcome the stress because Jesus came into the world and Jesus has overcome yes. the world. Yes. In our text today, the author and apostle John had a special experience that started in chapter one while he was in exile on the island called Patmos. How many of you would consider exile a place where God would meet you and give you a special experience? Too often we rush to judgment about what others are going through and what we ourselves go through at times. Yeah. Not giving God the time and not listening to God closely enough Amen. to allow him to use these times as special circumstances by which he might speak to us and let us know exactly what he has in store for us. From this pivotal text here in chapter 7, I need to let you know it's placed between chapter 6 and chapter 8 where the seven seals of God were being opened. In chapter 6, six of the seven seals were being opened, marking the end times. Amen. The seventh seal wasn't opened until chapter 8. So what is it in this pivotal thing in chapter 7? Why did John pause and get away from the breaking of the seals to remind us of what is happening here in chapter 7? Yes. You see, when you read the last verse in chapter 6, you'll find out that John was experiencing some stress himself. You see, because the seals were being broken in chapter 6, the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal, the fifth seal, every single time bad things were happening as each seal was broken. The anticipation was growing. And then as we get to the last verse in chapter 6, the question is asked, For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Yeah. Well, I'm glad that John took some time in chapter 7 to answer the question, who is able to stand? 
we see in today's day that this poll was taken, the majority of Americans, two thirds of America is feeling stressed out. Mm -hmm. Some are asking who can survive mm -hmm. such stress? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna make it through? How, how can we make it through? Mm -hmm. I believe John in chapter seven has a great answer for God's people. You see, cause John in this conversation with Jesus, is given the answer simply that God made a way. Amen. With the emphasis on the numbers and their significance in the book of Revelation, I want to discuss the significance of three significant numbers in our text that will give us insight into the move of God and God making a way. You can celebrate today that God has made a way is making a way Amen. and will make a way in our lives. Amen. 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 He is worthy of all praise Hallelujah. and all glory. Amen. Let's look at those three numbers that give us insight into what John is talking about here. Starting at verse 9, which reads, After these things, these things was referring to the first eight verses that came before where he was talking about 144,000 Jews, 12,000 from each tribe of, of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, of Jews that were saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb. That was the initial answer. But then after these things, he says, I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number uncountable of all nations tribes peoples and tongues i like to read it as as all of all nations of all tribes of all peoples and all tongues or all languages standing before the throne and before the land clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands the number I want to lift up here is the number four. The number four. The number four is related to the earth. Yeah. Like four seasons. Like four directions, north, south, east, and west. Four is used here to describe the inhabitants of the earth. All nations, all tribes, all peoples, in all languages or all tongues, that's four. The number of earth, the number that describes the variety of all people. This uncountable number can be described by in four ways. So when you're dealing with people of the earth, you understand that people experience stress as part of the human condition is part of the human experience. All nations experience the human condition. All tribes, all peoples, all languages have a similar experience. We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Romans 3.23 reminds us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you want to see what it is, like how you were born and the mindset that you were born, I call that the natural man. The Bible calls that the natural man. Yeah. But if you want to look at what that looks like, look at a two-year-old child. The child hasn't learned the difference really between right and wrong, but it doesn't take long for them to do what? To start doing wrong. Usually it's lying. Usually it's to get away from, in some houses, the belt, in some houses, the corner, in some houses, getting yelled at. But it doesn't take long for you to tell, for you to understand that that natural man, the thing that we're born into, takes control and wants us to do our own thing. In fact, when you start teaching a two-year-old what is the wrong thing to do, what do they start doing? Moving toward the wrong thing, right? Don't touch the stove. 
I'm going to go touch it. Don't eat that this late at night. I'm going to go eat that late at night. Why? Because I got to see. I'm curious. I got to see for myself what's going on. I just can't trust your word. The natural man has a seed for himself. That's why Paul wrote in Romans 6 that there's a law in effect. When I would do right, evil is always present. And so mankind comes up with this way of distinguishing one sin as being less evil than another sin. People uh, create what's called stigmas. A stigma is a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance or a quality or a person. Amen. There are stigmas of mental disorder. Sigma, sigma, stigmas of, sorry, son. <laughs> stigmas of being hungry and thirsty, of being homeless. Stigmas of having HIV or AIDS and stigmas of being gripped with drug abuse and alcohol abuse, stigmas of having an abortion and being single and pregnant, stigmas of being the L, G, B, or T, stigmas. There's social stigmas. You don't have the right skin color. You don't have the right hair texture. You don't, you're not tall enough. You're not big enough. You're not short enough. You're not thin enough. You're not this, that, and the other. Stigmas. We tend to differentiate from each other because sin doesn't want to group us all. It has our mindset that we don't want to be all grouped together. Yeah. So we start labeling things as being worse than something else. John summed up the human condition with the number of the earth. Four. That applied to all in order for God. To make a way. Amen. Amen. The next number of significance in this passage is in verse 12. Let's read that. Saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The number here. Is seven. Seven is the number of God. Seven is the number of divine perfection. There are seven attributes ascribed to God in adoration in this verse. There's blessing. In the Hebrew, it's very interesting that there are, when, when I looked up in the Bible dictionary, the word blessing. It says, go see the text on curses and blessing. So I went over to curses and blessing and found out we really can't understand blessing because we operate in the realm of curses. In fact, the Hebrew is so specific about curses that there are three different Hebrew words that describe various curses. Basically, summing up, you can be cursed, you were cursed, or were, or he was cursed, and there's a curse. In other words, you can you can do the cursing, you can receive the cursing, or you can be a a curse. In the same Hebrew that got so distinguished and distinct about curses, guess how many words were used for blessing? One. There's only one word needed for blessing. Because you can be blessed. You, you can bless someone or you can be a blessing. All of that is the same root word in the Hebrew. And so... That's when Jesus showed up and said, when you experience, experience curses, what do you return instead? Blessings. When somebody curses you and cusses you out and calls you something other than a child of God, what do you do? 
return with blessing. I know it's hard. Amen. I know it's hard, but it's right. Amen. Amen. When somebody says you're a curse because of the color of your skin or because of the texture of your hair or because of what you do or because of what you don't do, you just respond back to them. God told me that I'm a blessing. Amen. 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 That's blessing to God. Glory to God. This is God's invisible manifestation to humankind. See, Christ is the word in flesh. John tells us. And we have to behold his glory. Amen. Amen. Glory. That's God's visible manifestation to us as humankind. Amen. When God shows up, we see his glory. Yes. When God showed up, you recall in Exodus. And Moses said, Lord, I want to see your glory. God had to hide him behind the rock. And God turned his backside toward Moses. And as he passed by, Moses could see the glory of God. And he was amazed at that sight. Just seeing the backside of God pass by. He was satisfied, even more than satisfied, <laughs> with seeing God's glory. You can see God's glory in your own life. When you get healed of that illness... That's God's visible manifestation. That is God's glory. When you walk around and you have a relationship with Christ. And you get into his word and you read his word more and more. That is the manifestation of God's power. That is God's glory. Yeah. Amen. The next word, wisdom. Wisdom. Theology is a theology of creation. In other words... We, when we look, Paul let us know in Romans, when we look at creation, we should see that God exists. Because there's no way that this, these things exist without God having created them. Yeah. That is wisdom. Jesus is the wise teacher. And if you would just go and read and study his word, some of that wisdom might fall on your table as well. Amen. 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 The next one is thanksgiving. Amen. That is true worship. That is a thanks offering to God. That is worship to the Lord. The next one is honor. That is to esteem or to regard highly. To regard God highly. We honor God in our living. We honor God in our sacrifice. We honor God by being obedient to his word. Amen. The next one is power. I like to think of it like dynamite. Amen. That dunamis in, in the Greek, that power that comes from God. The power of Christ, the power of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit. That power that helps us to live right. That power that helps us to walk right. Yeah. And finally, there's his might. Yeah. That effective power. God's might, that strength that God has. There's nothing that's too big for God to handle. Yeah. God is able God, so we bless God. We give glory to God. We mention God's wisdom. We thank Him for His thanksgiving. We, we honor God. We, we talk about God's power and we talk about His might. Those are God's attributes, amen, that caused the activity that preceded these verses. You see in verses 9 through 11, you can see the multitude that was falling down on their face. Before the Lord, crying out with a loud voice, not whispering, yeah. but with a loud voice saying, Salvation yeah. belongs to our God, yeah. who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Yeah. And all the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, realizing who God is and whose attributes, who God is and what makes God who God is. Will cause you to fall down on your face. Yeah. Will cause you to lift up palm branches. Yeah. Will cause you to cry out with a loud voice. Hallelujah. Will cause you, all of those in heaven and everywhere else. To fall down before the Lord. Yes. Amen. To worship and to praise our God. Yeah. It's like in our Bible study where we discuss the attributes of God. The self-existence of God. God is total being. No one created God. He is. Yeah. 
all in all. The transcendent God, the God that transcends all of our problems, that goes from place to place, is immutable, is unchangeable, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The eternal God, the God that is around forever and ever. You can't outlive God. God will always be there to make a way. The omnipotent God. He was all powerful. The omnipresent God who's everywhere at the same time. The omniscient God who knows all and sees all. The one God. He is one. Creator. Incomprehensible. Too great for you and I to understand. But yet that same God is worthy of all praise and glory. Actually desires to hear from you. Even though you've fallen short. God is able and God has made a way. Yes. That's why Jekyll Carr. Sings that song and just declares. That God is bigger. Amen. Than the universe. Amen. For I know you're great in all the earth. She says. You're bigger. You're bigger. You're bigger. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Amen. From four. The number of the earth. From seven, God's number of divine per perfection. There's one more number to highlight as significant that took four and bridged the gap with seven. Yeah. Now, this is God's math in verses 13 through 14. Let's see what it says. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, sir, you know. Yeah. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. That third number is the number one. Yeah. God used one Lamb to make a way. Thank you, Lord. God used the blood from one Lamb to wash away our sins. Thank you. It only took one's blood. Hallelujah. To wash their robes. And make them white as snow. It only took one's blood. Amen. To bring them out of the tribulation. Amen. Whatever it was that they were going through. Whatever stress you might be feeling right now. Yeah. I tell you it's only one's blood. Yeah. That can bring you out. Of that stressful yeah. period that you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't you glad that one yeah. Is all we needed. Yeah. Aren't you glad that God ordained just one. Yeah. To be the one. Yeah. Now that's worth shouting about. Because yeah. the bridge from earth four. Yeah. To heaven seven. Yeah. Is one Jesus. Yeah. Jesus was the one. Yeah. And aren't you glad that it only took one Calvary experience. Yeah. For him. To pay the price. Yeah. Aren't you glad that with all of the things that you and I dealt with. That God set it up that only one was needed. Thank you. Only one cross was needed. Only one crucifixion was needed. Yeah. Only the, the lamb only had to spill his blood one time. Yeah. I was amazed that when I looked in the dictionary. And I looked up the word stigma. I already shared with you the first definition. But the second definition in the dictionary blew my mind. A stigma is also the marks that were left on Jesus' body yeah. by the crucifixion. The holes in his hands. The holes in his feet. The scars on his, on his head. The scars on his back. The blood that flowed. Yeah. Those were also called stigmas. Yeah. So whatever stigma that you're facing with today. Whatever it is that you feel like you're just not worthy enough mm -hmm. to be loved by God. Whatever that stigma is that people try to label on you. I'm here to tell you that Jesus took on your stigma. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus took it on in the marks in his body. Yeah. Yeah. And because Jesus was the one that died for you. Yeah. God has that perfect math. Yes. That bridge from the imperfect to the perfect. Yeah. Yeah. From the number four that represents earth. Yeah. To the number seven that represents God's eternal. Yeah. 
divine perfection. The stigmas are gone because Jesus is. When you read John 14, 6, you can see Jesus' own words said, I am the way, yes. the truth, and the life. Yes. No man comes to God yes, Lord. except by me. Yes, Lord. I tell you, I'm happy right now yes, that God set up one to bore all of our stigmas. Yes. And he could take them all on yes. just that one. And then the result that came. And this is how great God is. How great God can use just one. In verse 17, for the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. Because of the work of that one. Amen. God is able to take them. How many is them? An uncountable number. So many that, the, that, that, that John couldn't count the number. So that's the last number. It's an infinite number. Yeah. A number that we can't count on our fingers. We can't count on the computer. The greatest computer in the world can't count the number of people that God has elected and selected yeah. to be saved by him. We can celebrate today that God made a way. Yeah. We can celebrate today, amen, that God made a way for us. That no matter how much stress you might feel, that God made a way. No matter how many stigmas you might be dealing with, Jesus took them all on. And Jesus shed his blood. And God made a way. What Jesus did, amen. Amen. Because of what Jesus did, the doors of the church are wide open, amen. You may find yourself. Outside of a right relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, as Jesus declared, I am the way, the yeah. truth, and the life. No man comes to God but by me. If there's one today that wants to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and get your relationship right with God, amen. It's very simple. Just simply say, Lord, I'm sorry for sinning against you. Have in your heart the mindset to turn around from a way of sin to a way of life. And God will save you. Amen. Is there one today? Is there one today? Amen. Amen. God is able. Amen. God has made the way. Amen. And if you're in church, in search of a church home, amen. And you want to join us here at New Life Missionary Baptist Church, amen. We invite you to come and worship with us and be a member here and work in God's kingdom. Come on and give God some praise.